Hi guys, my name is Simone and welcome back to 5th grade math with All STEM. The topic that we will be covering today is measurement and data. As always, our videos have 8 to 15 review questions that are time stamped in the description box below. We also have a links to further reference page that can help deepen your understanding of the topics covered in this Let's video. Let's jump right into the first question. Question 1. Shelby is baking a cake and the recipe calls for three and a half cups of flour. However, she's lost all of her measuring cups and only has a tablespoon left. There are 16 tablespoons in a cup. How many tablespoons of flour does Shelby need? I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem and if you need Okay, so the answer is 56 tablespoons. If you got that question right, you can skip to the next question using the timestamps below, or you can continue watching for the explanation. To find out how many tablespoons of flour Shelby needs, we need to multiply 3 and a half with 16. Since there are 3 and a half cups of flour, and there are 16 tablespoons in one cup. So we need to do 16 times 3 plus 1 half. So we can use the distributive property to calculate this. 16 times 3 and 16 times 1 half. So evaluating 16 times 3 is 48, and 16 times 1 half is just dividing 16 into two parts, which is 8. So 48 plus 8 equals 56 tablespoons, which is our answer. Question two, there are 52 weeks in a year, seven days in a week, and 24 hours in a day, and 60 minutes in one hour. How many minutes are there in a year? I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem. Okay, so the answer is, Five two four one six zero, or 524,160 minutes. If you got this question correct, you can skip to the next one, or you can continue watching for the explanation. So let's do this step by step. 60 minutes in an hour, multiplied by 24 hours in a day, is 1,440 1, minutes in a day, since 60 times 24 is 1,440. 1,440 minutes in a day multiplied by 7 days in a week is 10,080 minutes in a week since 1,440 times 7 is 10,080. 10,080 minutes in a week multiplied by 52 weeks in a year is 524,160 minutes in a year since 10,080 times 52 is 524,160. So the answer is 524,160 minutes in one year. Question three. Delilah observes the rate at which a jug of water freezes by measuring the temperature every 10 minutes and recording the data in a line graph. How long did it take for the water to freeze completely? Here is a graph that she recorded the temperature and time at, and I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem. All right, so the answer to this problem is around 68 minutes. If you got this question correct, you can skip to the next one. To find how long it took for the water to freeze, you simply need to look at the graph and find when the temperature hits 32 degrees, since 32 degrees is the temperature at which water freezes. So here is a time elapsed, which is the x-axis, and here is a temperature, which is the y-axis. So 32 degrees is going to be around here, Right, so we need to just draw a line at around that place to see where the temperature of the water froze. So this is a point at which the water froze, and this is around nearly 70, but not quite. So it's around 68 minutes, but like 67 and 69 are also acceptable answers. Question three. Nora surveys her class on their favorite ice cream flavors. Will the data be categorical or will the data change over time? Here is the graph that Nora surveyed her class on 
and I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem. Okay, so the answer is the data will be categorical. If you got this question correct, feel free to skip to the next one. Categorical data can be represented on a bar graph, while data that changes over time is commonly represented on a line graph. In this case, Nora is surveying her classmates on their favorite ice cream flavors, which is represented in a bar graph, and so this data is categorical. Additionally, the data cannot change over time because it's not like the um the amount of students that like vanilla or chocolate or whatever are going to change like in a few seconds right they're going to remain pretty much consistent which means that the data cannot change over time which leaves the answer that the data is categorical question four find the area of this figure i'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem All right, so the answer to this question is 32. If you got that correct, feel free to skip to the next question. We can see that the rectangular, this rectangular prism has dimensions of four times four times two. To find the area, we can start by counting the amount of cubes in each layer, which is this, and then adding them together. So the top layer has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16 cubes. This is in the top layer. And since there are two of these layers, we get 16 times two equals 32 cubes. Another way to solve this question is simply just to multiply all of these numbers together. The area of a rectangular prism is normally solved by multiplying the length times the width times the height. So length times width equals 16, and then that times the height equals 32, which is also our answer. Question five, find the area of this figure. I'll give you guys a few seconds to figure out the answer to this problem. Okay, so the answer to this problem is 60. If you got that correct, feel free to skip to the next problem. So let's solve this the same way that we solved the last one. The dimensions of this rectangular prism are four times three times five. So we can multiply all three of these numbers. Four times three equals 12. And then you multiply 12 by five to get 60. And so our answer is 60. Question six. Find the area of this figure. I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem. All right, so the answer to this problem is 875 cubic centimeters. If you got that question correct, feel free to skip to the next question. This figure is called a composite 3D shape. It is made up of a rectangular prism and a cube. A composite 3D shape is when it's not like just one shape, it's like two or more. So this one is made up of a rectangular prism over here and a cube over here that we can kind of separate like this. To find the area of a composite figure, the easiest way is to find the area of each individual part and then add the two of them together. Let's divide this shape. So. To find the area of the first section, we have to multiply 5 times 15 times 10, because this is 5, this is 15, and this is 10 for the rectangular prism, right? So 5 times 15 times 10 is 750. Now, to find the area of the second section, we just have to multiply 5 times 5 times 5, because it is a cube, right? So all the dimensions will be the same. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Then we have to add these two numbers together. 750 plus 125 equals 875. So the answer is 875 cubic centimeters. Question 7. Find the volume of the composite figure. This one right here. I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem.
All right, so the answer to this question is 24 inches cubed. Let's use the same method that we did for the last figure. To find the area, we need to split the shape into two parts. Fortunately, this has already been done for us, the green cube and the blue rectangular prism. So let's find the volume of each second, section. The green cube is, since it's a cube, it has two and then two and then two. So two times two times eight equals, two times two times two equals eight inches cubed. Now the blue rectangular prism has dimensions of two, four, and two. So two times four times two equals 16 inches cubed. Now we have to add eight plus 16. So we get eight plus 16 equals 24 inches cubed, which is our answer. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more. We also have a link to further reference page that I talked about before that is linked in the description box below. Feel free to comment any questions that you may have about the topics covered today. Thank you guys, and I hope to see you in the next one.